Hi, Fall. Hello. Hi. Hi, also. Good evening. The, the internet. Hi, everyone. Yeah. I, I'm I'm Michael Hayes here, everyone's favorite uh, ranking maniac. <laughs> I'm Paul Brooks, everybody's favorite uh, Blair Witch enthusiast. That's true. You're my favorite Blair Witch enthusiast. Easily. Thank you. Hands down <laughs> easily, Paul. And I'm, I'm glad you're here and ready to rank some Blair Witch. Cause that's what we'd be doing. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm excited. You know, you, you love Blair Witch. I guess so. I mean, we just we'll find out. You defended the Blair Witch to Book of Shadows. Sorry, reverse that. But you know, in court recently, this past week, even. That's true. That's true. Uh, we we recently uh, had the big trial. I'm very happy that it went well. So I'm excited now to kind of get into the other, you know, aspects of the universe here without having to like uh, worry about, you know, any jurors trying to convince me that it's part of the Doctor Who universe or anything like that. What juror would even do that? That's wild. Mm, mm. Mm, mm. Well, let's get into it. If, you yeah. have, if you're unfamiliar with the tier list, the way it goes is we've got different rankings and multiple items can be in, within each ranking. So you don't have to necessarily make them, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. You can say five things are number one and that's fine. And so that's what we're going to do here, Paul. We're going to go through the Blair Witch, Blair Witch universe. And uh, Let's do it. you're going to you're going to say what things are. Okay. All right. Well, let's just jump in. First one. I mean, obviously, the Blair Witch Project, classic, nineteen ninety nine. Paul, are you holding the image? Do you are do you have a, top, a printout of the image I have? No, I just collect DVDs, so I have it here. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Um. Well, for anyone who doesn't know, the Blair Witch uh, from nineteen ninety nine is about student filmmakers set out to shoot a documentary about the Blair Witch. In the Black Hills Forest of Burkittsville, Maryland, many children had vanished in the 1940s, and people still avoid going too deep into the woods. The party sets out to look for facts that prove the legend, equipped with only two cameras and a little hiking gear. And uh, that's what the movie's about, Paul. It's yeah. first, it started a franchise. Like, what, what about, what, what, what's, why is Blair Witch important? Well, obviously, because it was a major cultural phenomenon in the late 90s. I'm sure you remember. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it was a big deal. Everybody, it was one of those things. And this, I feel like this doesn't happen anymore in the same way where like everybody goes to the theater to see this movie, you know, that everybody's talking about. I certainly was in the theater, you know, like when it first came out. Um, I had my theater experience kind of wrecked by somebody who fell asleep in front of me and was snoring really heavily. <laughs> so everyone in the theater in New York City was laughing and it kind of like ruined my initial Blair Witch experience. But that's Jeez. another issue. That's the whole thing. OK, yeah. well, well, then the issue at hand right now is. Where do you put this? If you rank this from F all the way up to, well, Blair Witch. Okay, can I do. ask? Yeah. Because like A through F, I get that, but then there's a Blair Witch stick symbol above it. Well, okay, so that replaces the S category, which in many non-United States grading systems, S is actually the top tier. Like you get an What S does S grade. stand for? I Super? I, when I was a kid, it was satisfactory. But there was better. There, there was outstanding above that. So I don't know. Hmm. The point is, there's an S tier, and then an A, yeah. and then a B. Then you know, it, it goes down with that. The point is, since this is the Blair Witch universe ranking, I figured we'll put Blair Witch if it's just outstanding, number one, best tier, highly recommend. Throw right. it in that. 
you know, okay. and then otherwise A is, A is very good. You know, it's all good. Well, what I think is interesting, and I found this out about you during the trial that we just had, mm-hmm. um, you're not you you were not crazy about the first film and i think it's in the same way that i was not crazy about the first Mm -hmm. film believe it or not um it's it's obviously very it's done in a way that is you know amateurish i suppose kind of on purpose but to me it can be very difficult to watch because it's so you know the camera work is so shaky so much of the dialogue is mm-hmm. improvised it's it's very unpolished in in a way which is obviously the appeal for some people yeah but for me it just wasn't uh it's not my favorite thing but that being said you know obviously we have to put into context the fact that this is a film that changed filmmaking in in certain respects in a lot of ways uh just in terms of the fact that su- a movie with such a super low budget could make so much money mm-hmm. it obviously spawned an entire subgenre of found footage it changed the way that a lot of movies are marketed because of th- its marketing campaign which was brilliant mm-hmm. so you know there's a lot of things to consider there i mean like I just made my first feature film and it and it's a found footage movie so it's like I wouldn't even have made that if it were not for this movie in a lot of ways you know Yeah So um all that being said I'm not going to put it at the stickman level but I would like to put it at the A level All right A tier it is Mhm Pop it right there. All right, then on to the next film, Paul. Yeah, uh, I got a new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. We had, if you notice the jump cut, we did cut to another microphone. Um, well, uh, another surprise people might be noticing is the fact that the next movie is not Blair Witch 2, but in fact, Curse of the Blair Witch. Oh, my goodness. The uncensored investigation that takes over where the project left off. Paul. Yes, indeed. Not only are you holding that up, but this is this is also a photo you sent me of your VHS copy. Oh, it is. Yeah, there's yeah. my hand. <laughs> um, before the release of the Blair Witch Project in 1999, the Sci-Fi Channel aired a 45-minute do- mockumentary about the Blair Witch called "Curse of the Blair Witch." The program offers first-hand interviews with fictional uh, colleagues and relatives of Heather Donahue, Josh Leonard, and Michael Williams, including their Montgomery College film professor. Curse of the Blair Witch was created to give credibility to the idea that the events of the Blair Witch Project actually occurred, which was how the film was marketed upon its initial release, which is well said the beginning, I think, of something no other film has really done, especially to the extent that the Blair Witch did. Uh, Spoiler, (laughs) there's more. Yeah. Uh, But Paul, Paul, so this is a sci fi channel original. Right. In, or or aired on there. They didn't I'm sure they didn't produce it. They just were paid to air it. Um what 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 do you think about this? How do you rank this? Um I mean, you know, I have it here and it's it's an interesting watch at least once, but it's really just a TV special, you know, kind of cash in thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't really consider it to be like, um, a movie, a proper movie in the sense of the other ones. So I would give it a C. C. All right. Yeah, it's fine. Talk it, knock it down here a bit. Pop it in the C zone. And there it goes. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, next. Yep. Surprising. Maybe many people as well. Sticks and stones. The exploration of the Blair Witch legend. Paul, consi- yes. this is considered uh, was considered for inclusion with the theatrical release of the Blair Witch Project, and but then was released on VHS as part of a special promotion that ran with the Blair Witch Project. Um, Six and Stones runs about thirty minutes, and it overlaps with the mockumentary Curse of the Blair Witch. This mockumentary primarily consists of alternate cuts from many of the previous films interviews. Uh, but there is some new material to be found, including a brief 1995 conversation with Joshua Leonard's father 
about his son's disappearance. Yeah. I just watched this for the first time tonight in preparation for this video. Mm -hmm. how, how, how does this stack up? Uh, mm. uh, no, it's interesting because there are so many of these little add-ons, you know, like to sort of supplement the original film, mm -hmm. which really kind of like goes to show you how much of a phenomenon it really was that there's all these things that they were putting on TV to sort of like try to, I, I don't know if it was to help generate interest in the movie or if it was to just, you know, like get TV ratings because the Blair Witch Project was so popular at the time. But this one was not, not great in my opinion. Um, it was... The setup was very weird. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I thought that it, this was a blockbuster exclusive. It may have. I don't have that information here, so that sounds about right. That's what I think it said at the beginning of the tape. And so the presentation was was a little weird because it's like, oh, we we found more footage from the woods, and and it's like we didn't go into the woods. We wouldn't. <laughs> we're not crazy enough. Like blockbuster is like. We as a corporation did not go into the woods to find this, but but somebody gave it to us and now we're showing it to you. It was a very weird setup. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll give it a D. A D tier? All right. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, the, the Blair Witch, I mean, I don't, I don't know of anything else that has done so much to really make you try to believe it's real yeah like do you remember man remember 1999 blair witch came out and everyone was like is it real and those people are stupid i i'm stupid then so many people <laughs> were like is it real i mean i hadn't seen it here's the thing never saw it so i also had seen all this stuff all, all this these news buzzes and you know jay leno and and whoever just yeah. being like it's, it could be a thing you know, you know, you know, you know. and uh yeah, they put a lot of effort into that, including a third one called Massacre of the Berksville Seven, the Blair Witch Legacy. Oh, my gosh. This, this uh, you know, when the Blair Witch Project premiered on Showtime. So this is when it started being part of on cable t television. Um, it was accompanied with a new 40 minute Blair Witch mockumentary named the Berksville Seven, which delved into the murder case of Rustin Parr. That was which was something that was mentioned in the Blair Witch Project. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this one? I don't know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I watched part of one that dealt with the Burkittsville 7, but I thought it had a different title. Mm, okay. um, but you said that this is the one from Showtime. Yes. Um, so I think I have seen part of it. And if it's the one that I'm thinking of, it's mostly talking heads. And again, it just goes back to what you were saying about like, how much effort was put into expanding the mythology of the original film and like filling in all the gaps of like Rustin Parr and the kids here, the Burkittsville seven, mm -hmm. all the little like characters that, that are mentioned in the first film are all expanded into these little like TV documentaries. Mm. And it's, I don't know. It's if you're a diehard fan that I'm sure all of this stuff is, is interesting. I mean, like, I'm I'm not like, you know, Blair Witch isn't like Star Trek or Battlestar Galactica to me or anything like that. You know, like I've seen yeah. a lot of it, but I'm not like psychotic about it. So sure. I'll, I'll also give this a D. A D? All right. Mm -hmm. Let's pop it down into the D. Sorry, Showtime. You know what? Showtime's been struggling for so long. This, this isn't what has made them not be as successful as I want to be. <laughs> it's fair. All right. Well, coming up next, obviously, as everyone knows, um, is the most obvious thing. Oh, the Scooby-Doo project from, <laughs> from 1999. Oh, man. Paul, what is this? I don't know what this is, actually. You added this to the list. I, I don't exact. I mean, it's a parody of the Blair Witch Project that okay. came out in 1999. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that Cartoon Network just did a parody of the movie with Scooby-Doo. And it is mm -hmm. funny as hell. Okay. Um, it, 
it's it's a pair like i said it's a parody where like they get in the mystery van and they go out to the woods and so it's this mixture of animation with live action stuff and it's all like shaky There's cam live footage action in it yeah it's nuts what um okay. a a tier yeah oh man i love it check it out um the, it's on youtube um we should put a link down below to it all right we'll put a link down below scooby Doo yeah. project a tier that's maybe a bit much <laughs> Could I you could you do could you do a thing where it, I mean you know it's not like an official thing it's just a parody could you dip it into B like yeah, like a little, just a little oh, bit oh so that's too much all right hold on. just just a little B just a smidge of B right there yeah all right perfect now up next big surprise there it is Book of Shadows oh, Blair Witch Two <laughs> we finally got to movie number two oh shit you got them all ready and prepped of course of course Paul. I, I don't think it ever clicked with me until I was making this that this image is a tree stump. Yeah. But someone's face, which is important within the film. There's a, a Blair Witch tree in it. So I guess that's what right. they like angled on. Like it's it's important, but not that important. So it's interesting, but it looks fucking cool. That's what's so interesting. Well, if you don't know anything about the movie, you're like, okay, there's a book. Apparently there's a book involved and there's mm -hmm. a tree involved, but not really. There's not a book. Uh, there's not a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously we just uh, reviewed this for the season finale of B-Movie Mania. Um, and I defended it in movie court and I love it. Um, I think that this movie gets unfairly criticized for being you know, not the first movie and fair enough. Like it's definitely not going to be for everybody, but sure. I mean, you know, like I said in our review, which, you know, go check that out if you haven't listened to the uh, full episode, but they, they take this, they take part two in a completely different direction than part one, where it is a traditional narrative. It is not mm -hmm. found footage. Um, there's elements of it. I mean, there's sort of a documentary thing at the beginning and then like the characters in the film have cameras that they're using and that's a big part of the plot. Yeah. But in terms of the look and the style of the film, it's a, you know, it's shot on 35 millimeter film and it looks like a regular movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, what do you so think? oh, I mean, stick man all the way. Yeah. You obviously love, you love this movie. <laughs> that's fair. I think it personally is the best of the group. Yeah. I mean, I was very happy that you, I, cause I truly had no idea, you know, which direction you or anyone else on the episode were going to go. And, mm -hmm. and you made your, you gave your rating first and you said, I like this movie so much better than the first movie. I'm like, Oh, great. But then you go, which isn't saying much because I hated the first <laughs> yeah, film. It, but and you're like, you're like, it's a lot more, would you say, it's a lot more cerebral or something. And then you're yeah. like, but I said that and now I just almost threw up. So <laughs> yeah, I said a lot of things. Well, I didn't say all that much. I was just an impartial juror in that, in that right. episode. So uh, anyway, moving on. Shadow of the Blair Witch. Ooh. <laughs> Airing on the Sci-Fi Channel in 2000 in conjunction with the release of Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. This mockumentary, Shadow of the Blair Witch, takes on an objective look at the events of Book of Shadows. It examines the troubled life of the real-life Jeff Patterson, uh, his obsession with the Blair Witch Project. Within the documentary, the Book of Shadows is presented as a uh, film adaptation based on the Black Hills murders that took place shortly after the events of the Blair Witch Project. This documentary presents Book of Shadows as a film within the film, as what you were just kind of saying there, Paul. Yeah, but this is interesting because it it like recontextualizes the the movie because it 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 says that the people in the movie which is like like in this movie mm -hmm. the Blair Witch project exists as a movie, right? Yeah. Okay. But what this documentary Shadow of the Blair Witch says is that the characters in the fictional book of shadows are based off of real people mm -hmm. that that i guess saw the movie and 
and Jeffrey Patterson killed people and is in jail because of that. It's weird. Huh. It's 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 hard to get my head wrapped around, but at first I'm watching it, I'm like, okay, they had to like use a different actor. Jeffrey Donovan plays Jeff in in Book of Shadows. Yeah. And in this movie, Jeff Patterson is played by a different actor. I'm like, oh wait, but that makes sense because Jeffrey Donovan is playing his character movie and the person they're showing here is supposed to be the real jeff patterson mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So i'm like oh so it took me a second to get my head wrapped around and then once i figured that out i'm like this is actually pretty cool because they're trying to like tie it to the original film a little bit more yeah um so i would rank this as hot as the highest of the like these little tv documentaries i would put it in the b category the B. all right yeah that's the shake a stick at. not bad Oh, Not bad. A little B situation. And it's got a nice wide picture on here, so it looks really good on here. Sweet. <laughs> uh, all right. Up next, Paul, is uh, the 2002 Blair Witch film, The Blair Thumb. <laughs> oh, my God. In October is... of some year, three student filmmakers went into the woods and shot a documentary about the Blair Thumb without a tripod. Oh my God! Is there a category? Is there a, a level higher than Stick Man? Yeah, we can <laughs> pop it up on the title category. Uh, no, I don't want to do that because. Okay. okay, now help me out here. Do you think you're? Both of us are big Steve Odekirk fans. Mm-hmm. Is this one? Is this a DVD that you own? Yeah. Where is it? Is it back there? Yeah. Uh, fuck! I should I should have known this was gonna come up. Yeah, this is great content, and we're not editing this out. No, no, no. Um, I know that they're back there because last time I I was in that room, I saw them. So not not the Blair Thumb Wars, not Franken Thumb, no, not Thumb Tannic, not the God Thumb. (laughs) Blair the Blair Thumb. There it is. I can't remember if you and me have watched this together or not because we've watched several of them. I feel like we may have. Yeah, but I mean, needless to say, Steve Odekirk always does great stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'll have to forgive me. I can't quite remember too much about this. I'm sure it's great. So, I mean, I, I I'll, I'll rem- give it a ranking, but oh, yeah, do you want your, to do it? It's your part, but there is. They, I'll tell you this: they are very excited about marshmallows at some point. That's mostly what uh-huh. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would say probably a B, unless you object. Nah, B seems fair. Yeah, B seems very fair. Tack it in here. We'll toss. But it next time I'm up, remind me we gotta we oh, gotta check that one out. Gonna, we'll probably just watch all the thumb movies. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Paul, for that. And next up mm-hmm. is a YouTube video you sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Exploring <laughs> Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2, Paul. Um, produced uh, and uploaded by YouTube account Good Bad Flicks. The, the video takes an in-depth look at the hype surrounding the original Blair Witch Project, which then leads into the view of the much misunderstood sequel. Both films are great in their own way, but unfortunately some studio meddling severely messed up release of part two paul what do you think about this youtube video this is a fantastic youtube video uh i cannot say enough good things about it i can't remember off the top of my head who did it um Uh, good bad flicks oh you just said that good bad flicks great job on this good bad flicks this is honestly like a big part of why i'm so into book of shadows because it does a great great job of diving into like the the behind the scenes production of what happened like why i mean just as an example like they wanted to um have the beginning of the opening credits here that you see in the thumbnail mm-hmm. ha- be be um Frank Sinatra's witchcraft oh. and the studio wanted something more contemporary so they slapped Marilyn Manson <laughs> over it you know similar vibe so like yeah the tone of it is is completely different but there are so many little things in this video about all of the little hidden things in book of shadows blair witch 2 mm-hmm. uh 
we'll put a link down the, to this as well because yeah. uh, this is in my mind required viewing. I will give this. I'll give it a stick, man. Do it. This also, by the way, 2013. This came out. It was when this was 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 released. This was up. Okay. So like, this is oh not early on in the Blair Witch thing, but there is more Blair Witch to come. Is is you know right the thing. So it's an interesting situation. All right. Up next, the 2016 remake. Speaking of, there it is. Of Blair Witch. Uh, after sc- discovering a video showing what he believes to be his vanished sister, Heather, James, and a group of friends head to the forest believed to be inhabited by the Blair Witch. They they redid it. Uh, they revamped the whole story, it sounds like. No? Not really. No, is that what it is? <laughs> I haven't seen the first one. So. <laughs> well, I mean, a, a lot of people think that this is... It's kind of like one of those half-reboots half sequels Mm -hmm. because the main character one of the main characters in this movie is the brother of heather donahue who was the main character in the first blair witch project Mm -hmm. so it is tied uh you know canonically to the first film and it's all about like him and his friends going back to the woods to try to find what happened to his sister yeah okay so i love the setup um, obviously the technology in, uh, whatever, 17 years changed drastically. And so like the footage looks a lot better. Mm-hmm. The budget for this thing is a lot better. It's very slickly produced. It was directed by Adam Wingard, uh, who's made some great stuff. I really like this movie a lot. Okay. And also on the Blu-ray that I just showed right here, like if you're into, if you're the type of person who's into uh, special features and stuff like that, this thing is jam-packed with special features. I just talked about this on an episode of uh, tonight's double feature. Mm. Stickman. Stickman rating? Yep. Wow. All right. Good stuff. And there we go. Up next. Looking similar, but mm. the follow-up of the film, the 2019 uh, Blair Witch video game. Uh, It's a first-person story-driven psychological horror game based on the cinematic lore of Blair Witch, a story of the human descent into darkness, they describe it. Uh, Experience firsthand the toll that fear can take on the mind in an original story inspired by the cinematic lore of the Blair Witch. Paul, you've played this, yeah? Uh, Yeah, I own this game uh, on my Xbox One. Mm, mm Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because, yeah, it looks like the poster here looks like the same for the 2016 Blair Witch, but the story is completely different. Yeah. You know, like, no, the, the characters from the movie aren't in it. Or it's not like tied in closely. There's a dog in it. There's a dog. The dog's cool. Sure. Um, but other than that, eh, I mean, it's a puzzle game, basically. So you have mm-hmm. to like, you have to figure out all this you know, stuff you're, you're like picking locks and you're like looking at video footage on a handy cam and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And found, found footage you found. Yes. You're, mm. you find footage okay. in the video game. So like the premise is clever and I really wanted to like it and I'm mm-hmm. still playing it. Like I haven't got all the way through it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's scary at times. I mean, I have definitely like jumped. You would not like it at all. You're a, you're a scaredy boy. I'm a scaredy baby. Um, but there, but there's a lot of aspects of it to the, to it that are kind of clunky. Mm. Um, so I was a little disappointed to be honest. I sure. will, I'll give it a C. C tier. All right. Yeah. then. Pop Sorry, up. makers of the game. I'm sure they understand. Yeah. Watching, of course. <laughs> well, up next is the Blair Witch book series. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Paul. Have you read any Blair Witch books? No. <laughs> okay. Well, let me... Okay. So you're going to have to rank this on how interested you might be. Okay? Okay. So let me give you a little idea what these books are like. Uh, let me find my description of them. There we are. All right. So on the far left here, you can see there's a the Blair Witch, The Secret Confession of Rustin Parr. This came out in 2000. Um. It was the most shocking crime imaginable, the kidnapping of brutal murder of seven innocent children 
The particulars of Russ and Parr's crime made the case even more horrifying. The ritual nature of the killings, the strange symbols carved into the children's bodies. What the fuck? Parr's <laughs> revelation that voices in his head told him to commit these foul deeds. Some whispered that Parr's crime was just the latest in a series of murders attributed to Marilyn's infamous Blair Witch. But then Parr went to the gallows. All agreed that justice had to be served. Evil had been put to rest. All, that is, but one man. And I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming that's the lineup for this story. So that's that. Wow. All right. Yeah. And then and then there's a whole series of like eight of these, the Blair Witch Files. And I have one example. They came out between 2000 and 2001. I have two examples. They're very short. Uh, one of them is called The Witch's Daughter. Uh, is Lee Parpet the Blair Witch's daughter? <laughs> is she responsible for eight gruesome deaths? That's the description of one of them. And the other one is called The Prisoner. At 18, Eliza Baines was convicted of murder. She claimed that the real killer was under the control of the Blair Witch. Now, she wants Cade's help. But, she warns, if, you, if I tell you my story, you will die. Oh, so they sound spooky. These books, Paul. Yeah. What's your interest level uh, in this? I mean, for me, you know, I'm basing it off my interest level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is you have. I mean, or or just speculated quality, whatever. E. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I mean, nothing against the books. It kind of looks like, I mean, they're it almost looks like it's for like young adult. I was going to say, they got to be YA novels. It's, yeah. There's no way it's not. Um, I just don't like reading. So there's e. that. <laughs> Up next, the Blair Witch comic books. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, they're called the Blair Witch Chronicles. And um, uh, these books were made at a time in 2000. Uh, they're black and white comic books published by Oni Press in 2000 based on the runaway hit horror film, The Blair Witch Project. There are four books. Um, following the 2019 release of the artist in picture, uh, uh, the world became unaware of the urban legend that birthed the dark force of Burkittsville. The Blair Witch Project was a chilling and evocative horror. I don't care about the movie. Why is this thing like this? This unique comic book tale expands on the legend of the Blair Witch, delving deeper into the origins of the mysterious woman, Ellie Kedward and the influence her presence has on the small East Coast town over the years. For the murders of Coffin Rock and the tragic story of Rustin Parr through the 50s and the schoolboy pranks gone wrong in the 90s, and a Wiccan coven's attempt to cleanse the woods, the, the true mystery of the Blair Witch has only begun to be unraveled. So that's what these are about. Wow. Uh, this, I, this is kind of interesting, actually. I, I mean, I like agree. the title, The Blair Witch Chronicles. Mm -hmm. um this is like if i found this somewhere i would pick these up you know yeah um for a reasonable price at least sure. um so yeah i don't know anything about these i don't think that i knew these existed if you're a fan of the blair witch and you're familiar with these or the young adult novels leave a comment down below and let us know what mm -hmm. you think of them because i would be interested to know if anybody else has an opinion on these um, I'm a little more interested. I would put that in the C category. C? That's fair. Yeah. They, they, you know, that, that subject matter seems interesting. Yeah. And pictures. I like to look at pictures. Yeah. So. It makes it easier. It's less of a reading thing. Right. Um, next the Blair Witch legacy, Paul. Yeah. So this is a, a fan film that was made at some point. Yeah. There's some fan films out there and I just found out about this one tonight and sent it to you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but I, I have not seen it. Okay. Well, let's, uh, what's specifically then not on assumed quality. Let's just talk about, uh, you know, where's this fill in on the, on the, on the interest uh, level here? Well, you know, this would be a good episode for our, uh, not quite Canon spinoff mm -hmm. show Absolutely. where we, uh, review fan films. The, you know, the poster, it's not the Blair Witch font, which is not a huge deal. But then it's like, is this Ellie Kedward up here, like in the 1800s or something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm interested, but I don't know anything about it. So I just got to go neutral C See. as well. Is this is this like the uh, end of the first film where there's a person standing in the corner? Yes, that's the very famous ending of the first film. And so actually, hmm, that's interesting. Can you put a little smidge of it into the B as well? Yeah, yeah. look at that. 
It's a tall picture anyway. It's yeah, also like it. it's also reminiscent to um, the is there nudity in a video that you produced for Book of Shadows Blair Witch 2. So you didn't really get the reference to that if you you've never seen the first movie. I've not, but I do know about the corner. That that's like the only scary part of the movie, right? Technically. It's it's very scary, yeah. 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 Um but yeah, so I, I that's all I really know about that's that. That's cool though. We should we should do that one for a not quite canon sometime. We will. Keep keep an eye out for uh for that. We'll we'll do it 100%. Yeah. I'm up for it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well next the Bear Wench Project. Oh my God, you are diving deep. Am I, Paul? I mean, I suppose people know about this. Maybe. Look at uh, directed by Jim Wynorski. Of course. Four sorority girls with large breasts hike into the woods with their guide Lunk to find out the true story behind the Bear Wench when they show off their chests following a mangled version of the Bear Witch storyline. That's what it says. Have you seen oh, it? Oh boy! I honestly don't remember if I have or not. <laughs> it's entirely possible, but yeah. if I have, I don't remember anything. But if it's a Jim Wynerski film, obviously you know what you're getting into. Sure. Well, um, what do you where Where do you think this probably fits quality wise? You don't have. You could judge interest and quality altogether. I mean, I love the tagline. That's great. Yeah. No map. No food. No clothes. Uh, there's a lot in the C category. Uh, Jim, I've met Jim. He's mm -hmm. an interesting guy, but let's put it in the D category just to space things out a little bit. That's fair. We don't I would like to watch it though sometime. Well, we'll have to see if it's streaming somewhere. Mm, yeah. You know, that's a thing we can check out. Okay. Well, up next, Book of Babes, Bear Wedge 2. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that there's some people watching this video who are like, Oh, well, there's three Blair Witch movies, so I'll just watch this really quick. No. Well, let me tell about Bear Wench 2. <laughs> yeah. Also directed by Jim Wynorski. Uh, four sorority sisters recently visited Bear Wench Mountain and disappeared, prom prompting five of their beautiful busty chums to set out on a quest to find them. But problems and blouses come up when creepy things start happening in the woods. And the deeper the women get into the wilderness, the more scantily clad they become in this grisly slasher. Um, someone, mm. someone on Letterboxd uh, left a comment that I'm going to quote that said, A sweet Andy Sedaris cameo. Honestly, uh. outside of the frequent nudity, Sedaris is the m movie MVP. So you got that going. <laughs> Wow. Um, is there, I, I can't really see all of the poster. Can you shrink it down just a little bit so I can see the full thing? Is there a tag? There's no tagline. No, not that I saw on this. It's just book of babes. Bear wench too. <laughs> they went with the format for the movie. Okay. I got to respect that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll give that a C for the Sedaris and for the title. I'll give it a C now. Yeah. Okay. And I like that I also like tried they just did an overlay of the, the tree. Like it's not it, It's a stick figure with boobs. Yeah, and there's a stick figure with boobs. Look at that real big right there. Oh my god. So that's a C. All right, we'll pop that down here into the C zone. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. Bear Wench three, the path Jesus of the wicked. <laughs> uh, no, no, all these star Julie Strain. Um uh, and friend of the show, uh, Nikki Fitz. Wait, not friend of the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, interesting. I'm a Julie Strain fan. Uh, Julie Strain fan, as you know, Mike. Sure. Uh, who over is here? Um, can you put this in? Can you put this halfway between C and D? Yeah. Thank you. Watch this. Oh, well, hold on. I might have. Uh oh. Oh, it's upside. Well, okay. It's going to be upside down. But it's fine. There we go. All right. All right. The Bear Wench Project. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nikki Fitz, Julie K. Smith, and Julie Strain again. Yeah. Uh, um, now, here's the thing. Yeah. Let me tell you this. The Bear yeah. Wench 4 Project for Uncensored is a compilation of the greatest hits of the three previous films. So it's only just like clips of the previous three. F. 
F. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get something in the F. We got to. All right, now, Paul. Sorry, I, Jim. I do need. Yeah, these are still all directed by Jim. Um, <laughs> I do need to mention, I forgot to tell you about a certain thing about Bear Wench 3. Let's just get this back here real quick. Uh-huh. Uh, Bear Wench 3. Um, Why is uh, it upside down? Well, because I, I, I mean, I could technically fix it. It was just kind of funny that way. All right. Um, but it is, this is subtitled in the picture as the path of the wicked, but the IMDB title is bear wench project three nymphs of mystery mountain. And Ooh. there is someone on, on letterbox review that did say there was a five way chocolate syrup rub down that <laughs> I know you wanted this in between, but I want you to know it's a five way chocolate syrup rub down that may change your, your interest in review of this. A, Yep, there it is. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. No. Put it in the C category. Well, it's upside down again. <laughs> it's fine. It'll be okay. It's natural. Yeah. Okay. And, well, a lot of C's. Yeah. Well, you know, we got moving on. All right, the Bear Wench Project oh Five: God. The Final Insult. <laughs> a professor and a group of well-endowed women traverse through the wilderness to debunk the myth of the Bear Wench. This is the final one, believe- Paul. I promise it's actually the final bear wench, but there are five of them. I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Jim Wynerski directed it as well, surprising no one. He's got the right font. Yeah, this time it's the right font. Yeah. Hmm. I don't see Julie. No, she might not be in this one. Uh, Let's... Uh, uh, oh, this is... Can two, you put... This is 2005, so... So, softcore porn from 2005 just i like 2005 is a good year right. um do you mind putting that one between e and f no i don't know why i like you like i like <laughs> porn from that time yeah but like between the two lowest yeah yeah all right moving on something else please oh what is this? okay paul what is this <laughs> well uh mike Uh this is a little something for you actually yeah this is a little surprise you snuck this in here yeah we got to get you to write something okay so i have the uh book of shadows dvd right here Mm -hmm. right yes you do and one of the great things about this if you i mean you can probably go find this at a goodwill or something for a couple bucks today Mm -hmm. if you open it up there is a little thing inside here it's actually a little catalog oh. called Blair Witch Crafts. <laughs> wow. And you know, that's that's pretty good actually, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's all this stuff in here that you could buy back in Whoa. like 2000. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. what we have on the screen here is is one of the pages from this catalog that I have inside the DVD. Mm-hmm. So Mike, what I want to know is mm-hmm. how do you rate these Blair Witch 2 hats and which one out of the three that are shown here, would you most want to buy? Okay, so here's what we'll do. In terms of visually ranking, I'll shrink the image down to that one hat and I'll put it where I want it. But okay. I will talk about them all. Um, hmm, interesting. In this today, we're talking 2021? Yeah, if I mean, you can't get these anymore, obviously. No, but no, if you were to buy one. But like, if I were to wear one now, if I found these three at a, a, a village thrift down on Roscoe. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm. I don't like the blood hand. Like, I don't hate oh, it. Oh, really? Of the, of the three, I think it's my least enjoyable. I'm surprised. Um, it is the least branded of them. That's why I'm surprised, because I figured you would want something that didn't say Blair Witch on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, well, here's the thing. It's 2021, so I asked. Ironically, the Blair Witch does not matter. I think it might be funny to have a Blair Witch thing. Now, I do mm-hmm. like the style of the hat. It's that kind of, like, distressed kind of hat. They're like, oh, you've been wearing it fishing. Right. Um, so that's nice. But... I mean, it could go well with your The Blood of Children uh, t-shirt. Yeah, it would. Okay. I take, I take it back. That's my second favorite. Least okay. favorite is the stick figure hat. It's too pristine. Um, I think it would be funny and enjoyable to have a, a beanie that said Blair Witch Hunt on it. Okay. All right. I mean, uh, you are kind of a beanie guy. I could I could picture that on you. I like you. a beanie. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slip this down into this. And hmm, in terms of 
possibility of buying this if I found this at a thrift store, I give it a B. Okay. I would That's wear fair. this. I wear that hat. Yeah, if it was two or three bucks, you know. Yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah. But man, if it was half Why off not? day on that tag color, it'd be great. Yep. Next, what is this? This is another page from the catalog. So <laughs> okay. tell me uh which item of the uh Blair Witch jewelry here from the Book of Shadows catalog you would most uh want to get it is buy one get one free but which one do you want the most i mean the stick man easy oh now the stick man okay well, cause, yeah i mean of the group the, the pennies with the hands on them looks weird i feel like it's dead children or something involved and then bw2 just is uninteresting to me so <laughs> i think this on this twine the stick man would be pretty pretty fun Okay. Uh, just to have around, you know, maybe give it to your my sweet friend. Uh, she might, she wouldn't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of chances of me buying it, a little e lower. Yeah, E tier. Okay. All right. All right. Next certainly is something perfectly fine. Okay. What's this? Hey, cool stuff. More just random. It's just called cool stuff. Random crap. It's just <laughs> all right look you got uh, uh candles Blair Witch candles <laughs> key tag they were trying so hard to market this yeah I mean I'm still like Blair Witch mania was raging in 2000 and they were trying yeah. to capitalize on it as much as possible you got the glow pens down there what's the red key tag do Lights up. It's like a little like uh, yeah, glow, it, like laser thing. But it, is it? You think it's bright enough to like you shine it so you can see the keyhole on your car? Not that anyone has ever really needed that. Bright enough to go uh, hunting in the uh, Black Hills for the Blair Witch. And what are these Doctor Who things? Candles. Oh, the the glow pens. Yeah, yeah. they are uh, Blair Witch sonic screwdrivers. <laughs> They really look with the blue. It really looks like it. You should go for those. <sighs> Unless you're cold. You want the blanket? No, I don't want the blanket. I'm torn <laughs> between the screwdrivers and the candles because the candles would be an interesting thing to have up as decor. True. But I could, I could give our good pal, crazy Chris Hudson, a Blair Witch Sonic screwdriver. That would be a fun. Yeah, I mean... Especially if it comes with two there, you could keep one for yourself and give one to Chris. Ah, they're 15 bucks. <laughs> with inflation this day, that's like a million dollars. I wonder if there's any of this stuff on eBay. I would Dude. I would have trouble not buying this. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy this and give them both to Hudson. <laughs> um Okay, if inflation didn't exist, I would probably honestly think it was funny enough to just do it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an A tier. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All Sweet. right. There's plenty more in this catalog. If you if you do pick up <laughs> one, one of the uh, DVDs, there's more stuff in here. Oh. Uh, in fact, Mike, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't hit me with some of the stuff in here because there's a lot more um, Blair Witch games out there. Real. What? Okay. Yeah, from from back in the day. Oh my god. <laughs> but but that's, we're done. That's it. That's it. Well, well, no, there's one more thing. I see one more thing Is here, there? Paul. Yeah, and uh, we just need to do a quick rating of Selma Blair. Um, you know, uh, Selma Blair. She played a number of roles in films and on television before obtaining <laughs> recognition from her leading role in the film Brown's Requiem in 1998. Her breakthrough, though, came when she started Zoe Bean in the WB sitcom Zoe, Duncan, Jack, and Jane. And as obviously we all know, as Cecile Caldwell in the cult film Cruel Intentions in 1999. Of course. Uh, it took me like 20 seconds to figure out why... <laughs> <laughs> Blair, I get it. Yes. Uh I ran into Selma one time at the grocery store when I lived in LA. No shit. She's very attractive in real life, which is not surprising at all. No. Um she seems cool. Um I also really like her in a movie called Dark Horse, which is a mm. Todd Salance movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um she's great. Uh I will give her screw it, I'll give her a stick figure. Hell yeah. She's really good in Mom and Dad, too, opposite Nick Cage. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I love her in that. He's great. Yeah. 
Um, well, Paul, that's everything we needed to rank as far as I can see. Okay. And this has been enlightening and wonderful. Look yes, at this spread. Uh, this is a beautiful spread. It's a nice spread. Um, again, if there's anyone out there who, you know, like comment if you disagree with any of this, mm -hmm. that's totally fine. Comment if you've seen the, um, or if you've read the books or mm -hmm. the comic books or anything like that. Or if you've seen any of the Bear Wench projects, comment about that too. Oh, super <laughs> interested in that. Now, if you are mad though, if you're mad about, anything paul or myself has said about this please leave yeah. a comment but do so on the most recent ted cruz video uh and let let that community know about your anger and that would be great please. yeah please. appreciate that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well paul thanks for joining me for another uh successful tiered video where we ranked the blair witch universe it's my pleasure do you want to talk about um the erotic witch project after we go off the air what? here no we... <laughs> i want to talk about it now bonus content what is this there's no there's another i'm not surprising another porn thing i had five fair wenches and you had this i i don't know how this is possible but it seems like this is a ripoff of the bear wench project if that's even <laughs> a possibility so there that is oh my god well i don't know have you watched it i have it's terrible where would you rank it? If I don't have a picture, but where would you rank it? Mm, I would probably put it like in the in the corner underneath the F, like to the left of the oh. B Movie Mania Instagram logo. Like down there. Yeah, yeah, ending on a bad note. Yeah, that's fair. That's fucking fair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, thanks for this. Yeah, dude. Thanks for thanks for hanging out and thanks for for chatting. Have, cool. have a great night, and everyone else, you as well.